Okay. Hi, everybody. So we're vlogging from London. This is Emily. Another ninth of our official is her Instagram. Hello. Which is how we met. Um, so we kind of did a video of like how to properly shoot a dancer, like as a photographer, because I feel like this is something that's not really known well. And a lot of photographers struggle with this because they don't know like what's proper in ballet and like you get photos back that like your foot's doing something weird or your leg's not straight or something and you're like I can't use that it's a great photo but if they had just corrected me if we just redone that it would have been great so it's kind of some things we wanted to talk about and we took kind of some sample photos of things so there's like kind of three points to this um, there's the technique side of ballet um, there's body angles for photos and then there's like the simplicity in ballet photos that you can use and also like the ability of the dancer that you're using not every dancer can do a firebird leap or crazy things like in Jordan Matter videos, and I can't. And I get a lot of photographers trying to be like, hey, whack your foot up there. And I'm like, yeah, that doesn't happen on me. <laughs> so, and then you're just going to get photos that just look really bizarre. So, um, to start off, I guess let's start with technique, because that's kind of the main one. <laughs> so, um, with ballet technique, do you want to kind of talk? Yeah, so Emily teaches ballet. I, so I need to little, <laughs> little nuggets, which helps you really a lot with the basis of what you're doing. Um, I would recommend before shooting a dancer, looking up um, a basic ballet technique video. There's loads everywhere, all over the place, uh, just to kind of get a feel of what you're looking for, like what's a proper first, second, third, fourth, or fifth position, or what's um, the basics. We teach my kids, my three-year-olds know this, and they can tell you the names. It's plié. Relevé, pique, tendu, passe, sauté, and HBA, we don't care about those. Um, so, but essentially these five you can build a lot from um, in, in the different positions and just making sure that they're done properly. So if you're doing a passe and your toe is to your knee, is the toe pointed to the knee, is the heel touching, this is not standing tree pose in yoga, it is a proper <laughs> passe in ballet. Uh, just different things, is the knee further back because you want the knee pushed back you want it to be high up on your leg all these little details that if you don't know ballet you don't really think about mm -hmm. uh, so just making sure that um, the you know the basics so that way you can get a proper line whenever you're shooting because that it's it's like any kind of architecture any kind of anything um, the, the line in art is really what makes it so you want to make sure that you have the line in the photos that you're looking for and then also you can play around with that a lot too. So Yeah, and I think one of the main things that don't get fixed in ballet photos if you don't know what you're looking for is like things like the foot being pointed like all the way through the ankle is a big mm -hmm. one. So if you're not fully on your box, like here, let me have you show. So it's like if you're like, if I was like this, that's not good. But you want like my foot to be like on it or over it and like pointed through the ankle, like pointed through here good but this is good which you see you see especially more in uh in point shoes it's kind of obvious yeah in ballet shoes it's not as obvious yeah. so i mean in yeah in ballet shoes it's easier to mess that up so yeah the camera back. Fine. So, <laughs> whoops hang on <laughs> so uh just being having a careful eye to doing that correctly yeah and then like the next biggest one is like having the knees straight especially on the working the standing leg I can't tell you how many times I've gotten photos like that I've had like a lot of times it might just be my sister taking them or things but like I'm doing an arabesque and the knee that or the leg that I'm standing on the knee is completely bent which I have a hard time straightening my legs and so a lot, a lot is, of people do a lot yeah. of people it's not natural um, yeah I mean you have people who are naturally hypermobile <laughs> that don't have and to, people who are not. Yeah, that don't have to really work for it. It just kind of happens, um, which is its own whole other thing. Yeah. But if you're not naturally inclined to it, it's something you can think about to get it yeah. proper. So trying to make sure that the legs are really straight, especially through the knees, are really straight, mm -hmm. and that the foot is really pointed through the ankle, that's going to give really good lines. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other big thing, I think, is like the shoulders, which Just I'm doing right now. Like my shoulders general. are up here, but you want a nice long line. You don't want their, yeah, you don't want them to be like, which I tend to do too. And I or definitely this. lift my shoulders up, yes. I do this. Um, really sorry, bad. my arms get really tired. Um, <laughs> so like a lot of those are kind of like the main things to like look for to fix that are part of like technique and like not turning the foot the wrong way too. So oh gosh, don't let me, yes, let me do a sample of sickling. Um, this is so like 
if I were to point my foot back and do this. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, gross. <laughs> know, That's so, so gross. Bad. You want it more either straight or you want it winged, which is like this. That's ideal and valid. While we're here, turnout's a huge thing. Oh, yes. So you would want this standing leg. It, the turnout comes from the hips. So if her hips were open like that, oh gosh, and which puts all the pressure on the knee and cuts this line entirely. So turn that, yeah, turn that foot out and then turn this back leg out so I should see that knee. Uh huh. Except I don't have much turnout. It's okay. And then hip forward, yeah, and then she can wing that foot. So I don't know if you just saw that complete and utter difference, but <laughs> night and day. Then straighten that knee all the way down the front leg. I'm on a slant right now too. Yeah, so I'm I'm like putting all the pressure on her. Yeah, that. Ta-da! Perfect picture. Um, I don't think of what else. We got the eight palm oil, which is a big thing. Yeah. Um, and then like just getting like the right like angles in, um, which we did a lot of in another little bit that like we had her videoing me, and then we took the same photos again. I think is a lot of the body angles um, and just getting them from the right direction like if someone's doing an arabesque you like with the leg up the back you don't want to like shoot up the back of the leg that would just look really weird yeah, no. nor do you really want to shoot straight on because you're not going to see the leg up the yeah and then it's just awkward and you look like a like yeah UBT. sorry so like there's different angles it doesn't always have to be straight on the dancer it can be from sides to get more body angles like that's the biggest thing about ballet is the lines in ballet and, what and the, it's like, I mean it creating. goes from your like your fingers all the way down to the tips of your yeah. toes it's do your the one where you did the pose that Kaylee took of you with your arms because it looked really good how you did it and I can't do that as well as you can so like so this one yeah like just the line of her arms there and like it just looks really nice the head, I mean, yeah Depending on what you're doing, that's yeah. proper, but you want your chin. The fingers can't be. Yeah. You don't want hamburger hands you like want, I do sometimes. You want it to go all the way, energy yeah. all the way through your fingertips. Yeah, all the way to your toes, too. So, like, yeah. whatever you're doing. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> um, so that's. Oh, you're fine. So that's kind of. Oh, it's lot. all leafy. That's kind of a lot of the body Sorry. angles. Um, and then like the next thing is just like, a lot of photographers, like I mentioned earlier, like everybody's not gonna do Jordan Matter type ballet shoots. Like that's not normal to expect that. And even no. some of his actually aren't that extreme of poses. It's just the situation they're in. But like most dancers you're gonna work with, now a lot can maybe be good jumpers or good turners and things like that, but a lot aren't. Um, like I am not a jumper and also I have a really short torso so asking me to just do a bunch of arabesques with my leg up or a bunch of kicks with my leg up isn't the best line for me as a dancer because I don't have the long torso to make those lines look good so more simple poses like even just point shoe shots and things are like some of the, like or just doing a simple tendu where you just like stick your leg out like things where you don't have to try that hard but you still make it look really elegant and simple. If you get are, the, the lines and the technique yeah, at all. Those can tend to be some of the of best that. ballet photos for sure. without doing super crazy moves and things like that. For sure. Um, any more notes on that that you can think of? Not really. So that's kind of all we have right now. I mean, I may do more on this series if people like it. It just helps having Emily because she like knows how to correct me when I can't see it. <laughs> so, because even I can't tell until I go and look back at a photo and go, oh, right. <laughs> but so. Stupid knee is bent. Yeah, so. It's helped having both her and Leah who took some of my photos here in London because they're both like really good at catching all those things. So that's all I have for now. Bye. So clearly I am no longer in London. Um, but just to kind of explain the rest of this video, the next little portion here is going to be the part where we shot me trying different poses and Emily correcting them. And you can kind of see the difference immediately in a lot of these just with the little corrections she made. So this is just kind of to help with that. And I'll try and insert the actual photos that came with that too. Okay, can you get over farther on your front foot? Do what? Can you get over farther on your front foot? Like well, no, like, <laughs> like over farther on your box. Am I not over it? There, that was better. So either make it a super tight fifth or bring it into fourth. Um, just decide, yeah. Fourth, I think fourth looks better. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. That's nice. Um, angle your shoulders a little more towards me when you do it. Yeah, open that up. Yeah, there we go. 
Um, just remember to keep them lower. Like, don't don't flail them. <laughs> you ready? No, that's that's like an in between. So either low for first or do a proper third. So like or like I'm sorry, arabesque, not third. So either yeah, like that. That's nice. Uh, make your fourth wider. Yeah, there you go. Mm hmm. You'll want it to be super behind you. So yeah, and then turn out that back leg. Yeah, like cheat it and then wing it. Uh huh. Your hips. Uh, maybe it's the angle. Hold on, let me look at it. Yeah, hips more this way. No, other way. Uh huh. Um. Try your whole body shifting a little. Yes. And then wing that back foot like, yeah, like that. Put all your weight on your front foot. Mm-hmm. And then wing, yeah, there you go. Now, what are you doing with your arms? Yes. Ta-da. Um, uh-huh. They, t like that, and then you can tondu the front foot. I mean, not tondu, fondu, sorry, wrong word. <laughs> Fondu the front foot, like bend your knee. No, like go back into the tondu where you were. Okay. And then, yeah. But all your weight has to go on the front leg. Okay. Yeah, there you go. And good. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Hmm. Do it again. <laughs> the back foot needs to wing the, the, okay, wait. The standing leg needs to straighten at the knee. Okay. The working leg's foot needs to wing. Okay. Better. I wasn't looking at your shoulders, so try it again, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, you are. We'll work on it when we work on stuff. It's all like, I mean, you just have to shove it. Yeah, just f force that arch is what it's called. Yeah, like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. Just make your arms intentional. Yeah, there you go. Longer neck, you're like turtling. It was weird. There it is. <laughs> okay. I think those are, that's a lot. That's a lot of good ones. All right, so just to wrap this video up, um, you could kind of see the differences there. I tried to insert the pictures as best, but we had to film first and then take the photos. So that's why some of them are slightly different. Um, and I'm going to put in here too, just real quick, like side by side, the first arabesque that was really bad. And then like, and this is when we were taking them. So it was a completely different time, but like I did a first one that was really bad. And the second one was like instantly better just from the corrections she gave me. So I'm going to put those right side by side here. So you can kind of see that too. Um, and then that's kind of all I have for this, but hopefully this helps. If you have questions, please let us know in the comments. Also, if you want more on this kind of series on like, I don't have the best feet to do a point shoe one, but I can also ask one of my friends maybe to help me or something, or just try my best to kind of do it on my own. Kind of more what we mean by like sickling or winged. And like, that's why when you see dancers in arabesque, like, oops, let me swing my foot. Their foot's like, okay, I cannot show you because I can't figure that. It's like bent like this, but it's not like, if it was like that, that's really bad. If it's out like that, it's like winged, you know, I don't know. Things like that, things like not having shoulders up, but having them down. Um, just the posture and ballet, like Emily makes a huge point in just like researching a bit before you photograph dancers. 
watching a class on correcting technique or something. There's tons of them on YouTube. Um, I mean, I watch them all the time just for myself, but like little things like that. And like, yes, a dancer should be able to technically kind of correct themselves, but when you don't have a mirror in front of you, you can't really see that for yourself. So it's hard. And then you get photos back later that, or like just reviewing the photos with the dancers, even that can help. Like if you take a few and then show them and be like, Hey, is there anything you want to fix about these? And then they can point out, like, say, I'd like for that to be a little different, like that need to be straighter, that foot to be pointed like, so if we can try and get that. And that would be a great way to do it too. So that's all I'm going to say on this because it's getting longer. So hope you enjoyed it. We had a fun time making it. I wish we were still in England, but I'm also glad to be home. So bye.